task 10. So that's the last one. Okay, basically uh, now it's the uh, you know cherry on the cake, just connecting the front end to to the back end. And to do that, we're gonna have to go back to the uh, the front end Docker file. And you see that this is the portion of code that contains the API URL for for the back end. And there is a kind of a placeholder here, right? So like backend underscore IP. And that's actually what we saw in one of the first tasks. So we're going to have to put an IP address here. Now there is a requirement from, from the challenge, which is we're not supposed to go into the code and hard code. We're going to have to specify that through Docker file. So let's see how we, how we can do that. So for the last one, going back to here, let me pull it back. So front end Docker file. All right now, everything here is going to be pretty much the same apart from from run. For run, what we're going to do is we need to replace backend underscore IP with an IP address. Uh, if you're using Linux, I guess one of the easiest way to do that is using um, sed, right? The command line. So what we're going to do is uh, sed dash i and then s slash slash uh, slash g and here we're gonna we're gonna put the uh, what's currently there which is underscore backend underscore ip underscore underscore and then after the slash is what's gonna replace that placeholder and this needs to be the ip address of the backend okay now two things uh, i could hard code here the ip address right but this is this is something that could uh, could change potentially. So what I'm going to do is we're going to learn something which is called an argument for for the build. First, I'm going to obtain the IP address. So let me go back to this uh, EC2 instance. And I can do curl if config. I don't know if anyone had that during the challenge, but if you grab the IP address of Cloud9, that would be wrong, right? Because the, the database the, the backend is actually running the Docker host, which is a separate EC2 instance. So you need to grab this IP address. Going back here, I'm going to create an environment variable, which is actually it's an argument for, for Docker, but it's, it looks like an environment variable. And I'm going to call it backend IP. It, can be, it could be anything, right? But I'm just going to call it backend IP. And then after that, we need to specify the path for, for the file. Now the path, we need to be careful with one thing. If you, if you clone the repo, there's going to be a folder called front end, but because I copied everything inside front end to slash code, well, we don't have the, uh, the folder front end. We have source from source onwards, right? So what I'm going to have to do is to copy from source all the way to the end and then come back here and put it at the end. And I need to oh, actually, instead of do two runs, I'm going to do this. I'm gonna run another sad command. So same thing, but it's a different path. Let's grab that path. So it's gonna be source all the way to the end. Right? And then npm install, I'm just gonna kind of merge it here. So we're gonna execute three commands in one run instructions, okay? All right, now one more thing we need to do is at the top, there is an instruction called uh, uppercase arg. So that's for argument. And I'm going to call it backend underscore IP. So basically when we're building the container, I can specify different values for the backend IP. And that, you know, so that way I don't have to, to hard code it here in my Docker file. So that's why I have this arg at the top. So that's one of the ways of doing this. If you hard coded, not a problem, but I just wanted to show you how you can use arguments. All right, I, if I didn't miss anything, I think that's everything we need. Now let's see how we can actually build this. Let me make sure that I am in friend. Okay, so I've got everything there. Now when I do a Docker build, there is an option called build-arg, oops, build arg and this is how i specify the the argument so the first i need to specify the argument which is backend underscore ip and then i do uh, equal and then i paste the the docker host ip address which was 
this one here. So three dot something here. And that's how you specify the, the argument for, for your Docker file. And then after that, same thing. So dash T, which is the tag to series FE and then dot at the end. It's a little bit bigger command, but at least we don't have to, uh, to hard code in. There you go. Before I push this, I just want to make sure that, you know, everything is correct. So I'm going to do Docker run dash it of the shell and i'm just gonna cat get this file if i go all the way to the top yep there you go three to 18 so that's the ip address okay so it should work let me exit now i can push Awesome. So everything is already pushed. Coming back to the, the instance. Now, one thing is about Docker is that Docker loves to cache stuff, right? So it's going to cache as many layers as it can. I'm going to try one thing and it might not work. And we'll, I'll explain why that why that's happening. So when I pushed my image, I pushed with the, the, the tag uh, latest, right? Because I didn't specify anything at the end. So that's going to be latest. If I do Docker images here, Oh, it's already here, latest. So what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> you think Docker is going to download again or just going to use this? Let's see what's going to happen. So first, I'm going to remove the container, which is this. Oh. And I don't remember the whole thing. So let me just grab it. One. That. If I do exact go into it, let me try to cat that file. Yeah, see, it, it's still back in IP, which is not what I what I had in the, my cloud nine instance. And yeah, the problem here is that I pushed an image which is called latest, but latest is already here. So for Docker, it's like, well, it's right in the system, so I can just use it, right? And that's one of the issues of also using like the same tag all the time, because one, you don't know what code version is there. And second, Docker already has it. So it's, you know, unless you tell it to actually pull it, it's not gonna pull it, it's just gonna use what's in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this from, from my machine, from, from the Docker host. And if you want to remove an image, get rid of the image is Docker MI. Uh, actually, before I do that, it's not gonna allow because the container is running. The container is running, it's not gonna allow you to delete the image. So let's stop the container first. So Docker stop, Docker remove. Now that it's gone, I can do images and RMI, so remove image, and then specify that. Okay, so you see a bunch of things, and all these things that you see here are the layers, right? So, so Docker build images, you know, using layers, right? So, for example, if you if I have the Docker image, uh, here I don't have, but let's say that I had Alpine already downloaded, yeah, and I I want to build an image which is based on the Alpine image. Docker is not going to download Alpine again because Alpine is already in the system. So, uh, you know, all these images, they have different layers and Docker is just going to try to reuse as much layers as he, as he can. That's why you're going to see, you know, stuff like this It's like, oh, I'm del deleting one image, but you no, know, there's a bunch of things being deleted. So these are all the multiple layers of your image. Okay. So it's gone. Now let's try to run again out of my system. So if I run the same command, it should pull. And yeah, that's another thing, which is, you know, it's a good practice if you use a different tag, for example, a commit hash, because Docker will always be pulling because the tag is different. Yeah. And there was, um, yeah, I had this experience where we had, we had the, the tag latest in the repo and that that was being used in, uh, in, in production and, you know, some errors in the CI CD system. Someone pushed a tag, uh, a, a new image with a different code with the, the version latest and everything broke <laughs> so yeah so be careful when using latest okay docker ps we've got a front end here docker logs compiled successfully let's go into it 
see if our IP address is there. That. And there it is. Now we have the IP address. So yeah, I had to remove the image and then bring it up again. Yeah, it's uh, it can be very painful. So be careful with that. All right, I think everything's fine now. We have the IP address of the of the back end. And if I do Docker PS, let's make sure of a few things. Yeah, so we see that the front end is exposed in port 8080. But remember that the front end is gonna be loaded into your web browser, your local machine, and it's gonna do a request to the back end via the internet. Now, since the since the traffic is coming from outside, the back end also needs to expose its port. Otherwise, the front end is not gonna be able to communicate with it. Which means that we're gonna have to rerun the back end and expose the port. Gonna be this command plus the port. Dash P seven 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 seven. Make sure that it's connecting to Mongo still. Yep, connected to Mongo. Now, if I do a PS, we have 7777, which is exposed uh, externally. And of course, that, you know, if you're doing this in your EC2 instance, be careful with, even though you're exposing here on the host, and in theory, it's open, if the security group of the instance does not allow traffic to these ports, it still won't work. So you need to first expose the port with Docker and also open the security group uh, that is assigned to your EC2 instance. Great. Coming back to the application, so let me reload this. I have my network monitoring tool open because I'm going to need it. If I log in, boom, I can see all the tasks. And if I go back to the task, what's the flag? So the flag is going to be, so one of the last API calls made is slash slash tasks. And I need to analyze that API call and grab the number of bytes of the payload that contains all the tasks. Okay, what does that mean? So the last one, you see the file, which is like kind of the endpoint, is tasks. If I click on it, there's gonna be a bunch of information here. And what we're looking for is the length of the content that is coming back from the backend, which is the uh, 754 bytes. And you can also see here the size. I, I think if you're using Chrome, you're gonna see a number like this, but it's gonna be different. But that's basically the the size of the, the headers, right? Which is different than the size of the content that is coming back. So if I click on response, you've got a uh, JSON object and that's what we're looking for. That's the size of the JSON object. So 754. Okay, so flag, soap, CTF, oops. Seven, seven, five, four. And there it is, last task, task number 10.